Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be covering Batman Year One. Now honestly, this is something that I've been wanting to talk about since I first started my YouTube channel. But I've always kind of put it on the back burner just because I never knew the right words to say about it. But I do now, so let's just get into it. Every week is fashion week for me. used to describe this story and it's really appropriate because this story is very down to earth and dirty. This is not only one of my favorite Batman stories of all time, it's one of my favorite stories in general of all time. There's a whole 80s vibe to it. You can tell this came out around the same time as something like Howard the Duck. A great story requires masterful storytellers, and year one couldn't have had a better duo than Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. The story starts out with Bruce Wayne and Jim Gordon both coming to Gotham simultaneously. Wayne in a plane, wishing he was on the ground so he could see the city for what it really is, and James on the ground seeing the city for what it really is, wishing he was on a plane. And these two men are linked from the start, even though they haven't met yet. From the beginning, the corruption of Gotham and the desperate situations that many of its residents find themselves in is pretty obvious, and that's why the two men are there. The story takes us through 12 months in which Bruce Wayne finds his purpose and becomes the Batman, working his way up the crime ladder from junkie to pusher to supplier, while at the same time James Gordon makes a name for himself dealing with the corrupt police force and his complicated relationship with Batman. Gordon asks himself the tough questions like how does a lawman ally himself with a vigilante? Jim finds himself surrounded by people who makes a mockery of the very laws they swore to uphold and because of his oppositions to that kind of thinking he almost seems to be a vigilante as much as Batman is. And that's one thing I really like about this story. This is not just a Batman story. It's just as much about Commissioner Gordon, or Captain Gordon, I mean. And I liked him being Captain Gordon more so because he was up against the bad guys just as much as Batman was. But it's more so about him than it is Bruce Wayne. There's so much we get to learn about his character. Jim makes mistakes and even has an affair with his co-worker. Year One really gave him feet of clay, and in doing so, they made him one of the most interesting characters in Batman mythos. This is just an amazing story from the writing to the artwork. You almost don't even need the words. The pages kind of speak for themselves. You can just hear what it would sound like. This is one of my favorite scenes right here, Bruce Wayne walking in the hood. Now, this is before he became the Bat. But he's wearing a disguise walking down the street, and you can just hear this panel. The nightclubs, the people that are out, music coming from the streets, the hookers and pimps out and about. Gotham City has a life of its own, and it's just as much of an important character as anyone else in this book. It's not just buildings around. Gotham is gritty, but delicate at the same time, and that's all thanks to Miller. You know, you look at his work like Daredevil or Sin City, and they all have that style, that noir style. Year One just has it in color. But the things that goes on in Frank Miller's head is something so violent, vibrant, real, hot, and awesome. And that is what Batman Year One is all about. Only Frank Miller could make something as simple as Batman under a staircase hiding from the GCPD have you on the edge of your seat. If you've never read a Batman story or you just haven't read this particular one, this is a really exciting one to start with. This four issue miniseries is the guide that every Batman Begins type story takes elements from. Even in this new movie that's supposed to be coming out next year, you can see the elements they borrow from the year one comics. It's a really great story. I'd say it's even better than Dark Knight Returns. Now, if you don't like reading, there's also an animated movie you can watch, which I'm pleased to say is almost 100% word for word from the source material. Now, the only problem I have with the movie is, is probably the most important thing, the voice actor for Bruce Wayne and Batman. The guy they have voicing him 
is absolutely terrible. 100% horrendous. You can never escape me. Nothing harms me. But I know pain. I know pain. Sometimes I share it with someone like you. Absolutely terrible. They really should have gotten somebody better. And the worst part is, sometimes when I reread the year one comic book, I still hear this guy's voice in my head as I'm reading Bruce Wayne and Batman's parts. I hear his, his voice while I'm reading the words. It sucks. I would honestly prefer Roger Craig Smith. Roger Craig Smith was fantabulous as playing, you know, a young version of Bruce Wayne. His voice, and it kind of sounds close to what Kevin Conroy's voice would become in the future. Honestly, perfection. Apparently, the Joker's afraid of me. Wouldn't let me out. And for good reason. I don't like having my time wasted. You should have known trying to kill me was a waste of your time. <laughs> well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Not unless someone else puts up 50 million bucks. I wasn't worried. That would have been so much better. But... It is what it is. I mean, if you can overlook that, then yeah, it's a really good movie. But, you know, if you want to read this grim and gritty Batman story, I'll be sure to post a link in the description where you can read it right now for free. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.